Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to another science lesson. So today's lesson is super fun. We're going to be learning all about heat in outer space. So、uh, we're just going to be focusing on diving in the material today. Just reading about it and then watching some really really cool videos about heat in outer space. So、uh, let's go ahead and read first, and then we'll look at some videos together and go over the major concepts. So you, we're going to be needing our textbook pages 105 through 108, and for those of you who are using the scans that I sent you, you might have noticed that the order is wrong, right? It says 105, and then it suddenly says 104, which is this is the page we read last week. So、uh, for today, make sure to skip this. We're just reading 105, 106, and then so on to 108. And、uh, as always, if you would like to read alone, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, let's dive into it. Page one hundred and five, heat in space. People have designed many kinds of technology to control heat. Sometimes the purpose is to make equipment run better. Other times it is to make people more comfortable. During space travel, though, controlling heat is not just a matter of efficiency or comfort. It's a matter of survival. Our spelling word. The lives of the space crew depend on it. Space is a very cold place, but the sun's radiation causes objects in space to heat up. The Earth is protected by the atmosphere. Without the protective layer of the Earth's atmosphere, objects in space get very hot, if not cooled in some way. As a spacecraft travels, it can move from an area of intense heat to areas of intense cold within seconds. Scientists and engineers must plan carefully to keep the spacecraft and everything inside it within a specific temperature range. I would like to challenge you to underline or highlight any. Thing that you think might be important, or anything that you find interesting. So I'll do this with you. Okay. Space capsules. At the beginning of the space program, rockets designed for manned space travel had a capsule at the top of the rocket. Only the space capsule with the astronauts inside returned to the Earth. This capsule had a slightly curved bottom. While entering the Earth's atmosphere on it on its return, the bottom of the capsule faced toward the Earth. This design slowed the capsule down. This is the space capsule. Although the design slowed the capsule down, the curved bottom also produced much friction. The heat from this friction caused this capsule to get very hot. The exterior could reach temperatures higher than a thousand degree Celsius. I don't know about you, but I think that's really interesting. <laughs> As it dropped through the Earth's atmosphere, no one inside the capsule would have been able to live through it. So scientists and engineers had to find a way to remove some of the heat. So we're talking about unwanted heat here, just like we don't want our laptops to、uh, <laughs> get overheated. Similar idea. To solve the problem, scientists used an idea similar to how sweat cools your skin. They put a material on the capsule's outside that melted and vaporized as the capsule heated up. As the material vaporized it, it cooled the capsule. Sweat keeps us cool in much the same way, so they kind of make the capsule sweat a little to cool it down. On one, oh, we can <laughs> skip this way. <laughs> Don't forget one o six. Space shuttles.、So、these are space shuttles. As scientists and engineers developed new space spacecraft, new problems had to be solved. The cooling method used on a space capsule would not work on a space shuttle. Space shuttles were meant to be used again. Space shuttles, uh, yeah, they could not use material that would melt and vaporize, so they needed a different strategy to cool down space shuttles. What could it be? A space shuttle was also larger than a space capsule. More size means more surface area to cause friction, so it'll probably heat up even more. It also means that more surface area gets hot. As a shuttle returned to the Earth, the shuttle's exterior could reach a thousand six hundred fifty degrees Celsius. This could cause the shuttle's aluminum frame to melt if not protected. Oh no! 
To protect the shuttle and its crew, several kinds of insulation were used. One kind is like a heavy blanket. It was made with waterproof glass, cloth, and was qu quilted. This kind of insulation protected areas of the shuttle that do not get the hottest. A shuttle also used ceramic tiles as insulation. A shuttle returning to the earth glided like an airplane. In doing this, the bottom of the space shuttle produced most of the friction that slows the shuttle down. However, the friction also caused the bottom of the shuttle to heat up more than any other part of the shuttle did. For this reason, special tiles, these, uh, these guys, were designed to protect against very high temperatures, cover the bottom of the shuttle. So why do they put the tiles on, on the bottom of the shuttle? Yep, because the bottom of the huddle, shuttle <laughs> overheats the most. So the tiles are used to protect uh, the bottom against the high temperature. Very good. Faulty or flawed tiles can create serious problems. Scientists believe that tile damage caused the breakup of the space shuttle Columbia in 2003, which we will watch a little bit about. The tiles may have been broken or damaged during liftoff. When the shuttle returned to the Earth, the tiles could not protect the shuttle from the intense heat. The shuttle broke apart as it flew back into the Earth's atmosphere. So paraphrase for me, tell me in your own words how or what happened to the space shuttle Columbia that caused it to uh, break, break up. Yes, damaged tiles. Great. Now let's read about ISS, International Space Station. It's a large, large spacecraft that's also a science lab and a space habitat where people live. People from several countries have occupied it or lived in it since 2000. The ISS orbits the Earth about every 90 minutes. When it's facing the sun, the temperature is about 121 degrees Celsius. However, when it's in the Earth's shadow away from the sun, the temperature drops to negative 157 degrees Celsius. Wow, think about that. Talk about a temperature change. Similar to the shuttle, the ISS is insulated by a special blanket made of Mylar and Dacron. This blanket has layers that stay separated to keep heat from being conducted through the layers. It covers most of the space station. The insulation on the ISS keeps heat outside the station, but it also keeps heat inside. Computers and other electronic equipment generate a lot of heat as they work, as we know. Just imagine how much heat is produced by all the equipment astronauts use. The ISS also has a system, similar to an air conditioning unit, that cools the inside of the station. Pipes inside the station circulate water through devices that help absorb and remove the excess heat. However, it is so cold outside the station that water would freeze quickly. So the heat is transferred to pipes filled with ammonia. The heat and ammonia circulates through large radiators on the outside of the station. There, the heat is released into space. The ammonia does not freeze because it circulates back inside the station before or it loses enough heat to freeze. So what are some ways that the ISS is protected from the heat or keeps heat inside? Yeah, so you can see in like the main ideas of the paragraphs, they use insulation, they use a special blanket. They also have a system that's similar to an AC. They use pipes and ammonia, All right? Last page. Modern spacecraft. Radiator, radiators and heaters have often been used to control heat in space, but those are heavy and take up a lot of room in the spacecraft. New spacecraft and equipment are often lighter, smaller, and more efficient than previous ones. As we learn more, scientists and engineers make changes and add new technology. The space capsules and shuttles were manned missions. People traveled in those spacecraft. However, 
some space spacecraft are robotic. An unmanned research spacecraft is called a probe, meaning there's no people inside it, okay? Probes that can land on a planet or other space objects and move around are called rovers. Rovers are a type of probe. The rover Curiosity arrived on Mars in 2012. Scientists are, are using Curiosity to study Mars. Mars is colder than Earth, especially at night. The rover uses a combination of methods to control heat. Some parts of it are painted with a special gold paint that helps radiate heat outwards away from the rover's body. There's also a special layer of insulation called aerogel that traps heat inside the rover's body. Fluid-filled tubing allows unwanted heat to circulate through the rover system and be released out into space. Switches automatically turn heaters on or off to maintain electronics and battery temperature during night on Mars. So what is the rover that is used to study the planet Mars. Curiosity, good. And what methods do scientists and engineers use to manage heat inside this rover? Yep, special gold paint, aerogel, fluid-filled tubing allows unwanted heat to get out into the space. Through the space program, we have learned many things about our universe. All our knowledge could not have been gained, however, if we were not able to control heat. We are affected by thermal energy in many ways every day. We dress in clothing that's appropriate for how warm or cool the day is. We put ice cream in the freezer so that it won't melt. We use a wooden or plastic spoon instead of a metal one to stir boiling liquid so we don't get burnt. Each of these decisions is based on our knowledge of how thermal energy and heat affect us. Thermal energy is an amazing part of God's creation. It can be used as a powerful tool in many different areas. Everything from refrigerators to electricity requires understanding thermal energy. Byproducts of thermal energy can sometimes be dangerous. Protecting human life also means learning about thermal energy. A Christian can glorify God by studying how to use thermal energy. Okay, so a quick check. Why is controlling heat while in space so important? What causes the heat that occurs when space vehicles land off our land? And what technology causes a lot of heat inside the ISS? So let's go over the main concepts first. Now I know this was a lot, so let's make a part two video and I will go over the PPT with you then. Talk to you soon.